Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode is brought to you by Lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10 day trial, visit Lynda.com slash All About Android. That's L Y N D A.com slash All About Android. And by Gazelle, the online marketplace for buying and selling used gadgets. Shop from a variety of certified pre owned electronics or trade one in for cash. Give a new life to a used device. Visit Gazelle.com today. And by Braintree. Looking to set up payments for your business? Braintree gives your app or website a payment solution that accepts just about every payment method with one simple integration. Plus, Braintree will give you the first 50,000 in transactions fee free. To learn more, visit BraintreePayments.com slash Android. Welcome to another edition of All About Android, episode 238, recorded on Tuesday, November 3rd, 2015. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps and reviews for the Android faithful. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. And we are here all by our lonesome. Mr. Jason Howell is out today. Well, so we're not all alone. We're not all alone. We are, we are lucky enough to be joined by the excellent Dom Esposito. How you doing, Dom? Good. Yeah, just hanging out. Just hanging out. Cool. Uh, Dom yeah. is uh, Dom is a YouTube star as well as a contributor to Nine to YouTube Five Google. Sensation. <laughs> that's that's a little uh, pushing it there, but I'll I'll take it. Are Thank you gonna you. be like Justin Bieber? <laughs> You're just gonna like explode into your own, you know, pop stardom. I, I'm actually working on my mixtape right now. That's yeah. what I thought. <laughs> Hot fire. Well, we've we've gotten lots of requests for to get some uh, representation from Nine to Five Google.com, so it's good to have you on, Dom. That's a, it's it's nice to Thanks. get some representing. So. Yeah, 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 repping, yeah repping the nine to five hood. <laughs> you guys nine have like gang life. signs. Maybe yeah. that's yeah. maybe that's too. Soon. I got nine to five uh, tattooed across my chest. Oh. Wow, that's dedication. Yeah. There you go. Um, but now this is a perfect time to have someone from nine to five Google on, as uh, this week is is filled with some controversy. And, oh, uh, it's very controversial. Very this week. controversial. And it's only Tuesday. Yes, it is exactly. So uh, this week we're going to be talking about the the apparent death and resurrection of Chrome OS. Uh, OnePlus and BlackBerry want your business, and a whole bunch of updates to Google Apps. So it's the usual thing, so let's dive right into the news. Jason Howe may be gone, but that won't stop us from doing the Android news. <laughs> no, it won't stop us. No, it won't. Can't stop, won't stop. So uh, last week, I, I was shocked when I saw the tweet come across my tweet deck. Uh, the Wall Street Journal was reporting, uh, breaking the news that in fact Alphabet's Google, as they referred to them, will be folding Chrome OS into Android, which was going to be the solution that we all knew was inevitable. We've, we've been talking about it for years, about how can Chrome OS and Android exist separately and what are they gonna do with this? Are they gonna choose one? Well, according to uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, people familiar with the matter. Quote, unquote. Quote, yeah, the usual people familiar with the yes. matter. Uh, say that they plan to fold the Chrome OS operating system for personal computers into the Android mobile operating system, uh, a sign of the growing dominance of mobile computing. Um, and everybody went crazy. I don't know if they went crazy. I went but crazy. Did you go crazy? I went a little crazy. Yeah? Yeah, because I knew, I felt like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. The Pixel C, it was foreshadowing everything that was happening. Right. Google, of course they're going to move into this. They want to have a productivity suite made out of Android. It makes perfect sense. Look all, how well the service is sold. Even I tweeted. I was like, well, we knew this was coming. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Dom, Dom, what was your reaction to this to this Wall Street Journal report? I mean, to be honest, this is, I, you know, I, I, I'm not a huge Chrome OS fan. Um, I just, it's not for me. You know what I mean? Like uh, all the stuff that I need requires an actual like full on operating system with, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So I've, I've never really been a big Chrome OS user, but to be honest, it just, it makes sense to me. Uh, essentially Chrome Android can offer all the things Chrome OS does. So I don't know why it needs to be a separate thing. Yeah, they always seemed a little redundant in terms of what they did. And it always seemed that's a little... A good, that's a yeah. good way to put it. Very yeah. redundant. They should call it redundant OS. And, <laughs> just kidding. Don't do that. And, <laughs> and Chrome OS always felt like the thing that I needed to explain to people where Android just made yeah. sense. You know, like, no, Chrome OS, it's it's like a browser. The browser's the operating system. And, like, people never... Yeah, oh, so, I used to say yeah. it's, like an, it's like an Apple computer that lives in the cloud. Oh, that's a good... Because that's the only way that yeah. the adults in my life... 
because I'm not an adult <laughs> would would understand it. I'm still a child, so. Yeah. Well, so um, so I think I think this news lasted only a, a mere matter of days before uh, yesterday, this past Monday, our good friend Hiroshi swept in. Our very good friend to the rescue, uh, and Hiroshi had something to say on the on the Google Chrome OS blog. Uh, where he said, and we have Hiroshi here this week. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Hiroshi. Uh, he says, You're welcome, Ron. <laughs> Over the last few days, there's been some confusion about the future of Chrome OS and Chromebooks based on speculation that Chrome OS will be folded into Android. While we've been working on ways to bring together the best of both operating systems, there's no plans to phase out Chrome OS. And the blog post, as you can see, is titled, Chrome OS is here to stay. It's so weird. I So I actually kind of missed this news because I was busy being in like a candy-filled haze over Halloween. <laughs> and it was mostly the candy that I didn't pass out because children don't go trick-or-treating anymore because we've, we're have a society of scared people now. So, um, so you just sat at home so and I ate just, it all? That's what you're talking about. And, and cheese. I ate a lot of cheese, too. But um, that's not the point. The point is that I, I, came, I come to work this week and I see this craziness is not happening. The Chrome OS is apparently here to stay. So I don't really understand what's happening. There's just a lot of conflicting information. Yeah. Granted, I believe what comes out of Hiroshi's mouth versus what comes out of the Wall Street Journal, but it's well, kind of a bummer because well, usually they're pretty good on scoops and things like that. So, you but know. That, but so now here's here's where I'm going to here's where yes. I'm going to put on the, the pundit hat, the okay, analytical hat. Let's do it. Um, so according to the the people familiar with the matter in the Wall Street quote. Journal, um, and what Hiroshi then goes to say that Chrome OS is here to stay, he says, you know, ever since we launched it six years ago, we wanted to make computers better, faster. And then he proceeds to basically give a catalog of products in the blog post that are running Chrome OS. There's even a photo of the little Asus Chrome yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. you know, and talking about all these great things. And, and for $149, you can get this and yada, yeah. yada. So while, and, you know, saying stay on the lookout for dozens of new Chromebooks in 2016. So while he's saying Chrome OS is here to stay, was the decision to fold Chrome OS into Android a long-term decision? Like, is that is this a roadmap that by 2025, Chrome OS goes away and it becomes Android, and that's what the Wall Street Journal was reporting on? Maybe. You know, like, because it's not in Google's best interest to talk about killing this operating system when they have products on the shelves. Yeah, especially when yeah. they're kind of killing it. Couldn't they just bit. easily convert all of those devices, push an update that just... You know, makes a desktop version of Android that's similar to Chrome OS. I mean, they they could still be doing this in a sense that maybe they just did that because it was a panic move, right? Yeah. It was like a PR panic move. Like, oh crap, all these people are going to go sell yeah. their things, or people are going to stop buying this stuff, and that's obviously a good revenue stream for them, I, I'd imagine. So, or something. You know, that's for a really good point. Um, so that's maybe really it was just point. a PR a PR tactic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, definitely. I'm sure. I'm sure that once this Wall Street Journal article hit. You know, the Aces marketing person picked up the phone and called their their counterpart. Excuse kind of me, yeah, yeah. what's happening here? Yeah, I'm doing the voices sure, of all other have, people today, by the way. The <laughs> you know, they they got they got skin in the game. All those OEMs. I mean, yeah. they they've got a lot of a lot of money invested into Chromebooks. Right. <laughs> I, I I would assume I don't I don't know all about the making of them and stuff like that, but I assume that everybody's kind of knee deep in Chromebook stuff right now, and that would totally screw up relationships if. You know, if it was interpreted the wrong way, which it obviously was right. initially. So I can't I can imagine still see it happening. I can't imagine a desktop version of Android, though. Like that just feels so counterintuitive to the whole idea of Android. Well, that's why the, the question the question isn't so much a desktop version of Android, mm -hmm. but are all devices going mobile? Yeah. You know, and we're well, yeah. get OK, look at Windows, for example. Yeah, that thing it works on anything. I mean, yeah. you can put put that on a toaster and it'll run. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like maybe Android is going to be like a shape shifting type of thing where whatever device it's on it operates differently and not not necessarily like a different thing. You know, like a desktop version, but it's uh, maybe more in tune to work in that in that environment. Like right. a chameleon, kind of thing. a Chrome chameleon. Yeah. Chrome chameleon. There, there's. Chrome, 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 you're chrome welcome, chameleon. Google. <laughs> that was for the, you, Ron. <laughs> the, the other, the other interesting point to note in Hiroshi's blog post, um, uh, Chrome OS is here to stay. Is that there was a, a large focus on education and on enterprise. That's very true. I was actually that was in the back of my mind as we've been right. talking about this. Yeah. Is uh, way cheaper to bring these laptops into the classroom and to bring in a bunch of iPads. Yeah. Right. Oh, and that's and that's. I'm sure that's where they're selling a, a whole mm -hmm. crap ton of them right yep. now. Yeah, they have a I whole mean, thing at I.O. just around uh, Chromebooks being used in education. I don't think that they're flying off the shelves because of 
just general consumers. <laughs> I yeah. mean, no, no. no offense, but I don't think a lot of <laughs> normal people are buying them. Uh, I think that that they're selling loads of them in bulk to to things like that. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, and and I think that the 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 approach of consumer versus education and enterprise makes sense, but then Android is the stronger consumer brand, and so like going Way into stronger, yeah, yeah. So I think I think the the net net of this is that, or at least from my takeaway, is that Chrome OS isn't going anywhere, but. If the long-term plan is to run with Android, I wouldn't be surprised. So, like, I feel like while the Wall Street Journal, you know, ran really fast with this, and and Google did their is, damage control, yes. I, you know, there <laughs> might be kernels of truth in it. That's that's I wouldn't be surprised. It is so, the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> in these day and age, who knows? But, right first, okay. think <laughs> I'm all about the traditional media, but moving on from <laughs> traditional media to uh, developers, some developer-centric news. Good news! Now you don't have to wait for an app to process in the Google Play Store for an app update to process in the Google Play Store before you can download it. Now developers have a new option where they can upload their app to the Google servers, you know, in the proverbial cloud, and it will process. And when it's ready and all done processing, you can push go live. And then immediately, like, the update is available to everybody at the same time. So you won't have to go, you know, if you're really, like, aching for an app update. You don't have to go looking for the APK just to get it. Um, there are a few caveats associated with this news, though. Um, this can't uh, this can't be used for first-time apps, so brand new apps won't be able to just, like, do this push live thing. Uh, this push live magic, if you will. And there's still a little bit of a waiting period for apps to process before you can actually touch right. the go live button so and and you can only process one change at a time yeah and you can't revert changes yeah so, <laughs> so make sure that whatever you're doing you're 100 percent sure on before you make it go live because otherwise right. it's going to be hell for the rest of us right but this this is the continuing effort around making it uh, you know easier for developers to keep their apps on the you know especially with all security concerns and things like that um to be able to push these changes out pretty maybe quickly, it has to do so. with chrome os <laughs> You know, just like instant updates on your Chromebook. <laughs> like, all it just, right. It just all leads back to Chrome. Yeah, OS. it's yeah. just all, yeah. all roads lead to Chrome. Yep. Um, but talking about security concerns and security updates, uh, interesting story. Actually, before the show started, we were talking with Dom and Flo. We were here talking about uh, uh, a world where maybe Samsung and Google work together and Samsung makes a Nexus device. And uh, Everybody's happy yeah, and exactly. frolicking in meadows. But after reading this, I'm not sure Google would actually be da too down with that. As a, uh, a team of Google security researchers uh, were recently looking at the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge um, as part of an experiment to see how vulnerable the code uh, that manufacturers add to Android can be, and the results were pretty bad. Um, the Google researchers found 11 vulnerabilities in Samsung's code that could be exploited to create files with system privileges, steal the user's emails, execu execute code in the kernel, and escalate the, ex escalate the privilege of unprivileged applications. Uh, so from a security standpoint, Samsung didn't really pass this test. It's very, it's slightly, uh, hilarious considering the big marketing push that Samsung does with Knox. Yep. It's supposed to be this very like secure platform, um, because of the addition of Knox and et cetera, et cetera. But here we go. Finding yep. vulnerabilities. No, see, Knox is just to secure you from messing with your own device. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, so, you know, in the blog post uh, over at the Google security team, they said, we found a substantial number of high severity issues, uh, though some were effective security measures on the device, which slowed us down. The weak areas seem to be device drivers and media processing. We found issues very quickly in these areas through fuzzing and code review. So uh, it looks as if a lot of the- They found them very quickly. That's like, yeah. that's kind of the key quote to me. Yeah. I don't know. And that, now to be fair, to be fair, in their conclusion, you know, they said, you know, over the course of the week, we found 11 issues with serious security impact. Several issues were found in the device drivers and image processing. Like I said, some logic issues in the device that were high impact and easy to exploit. The majority of these issues were fixed on the device we tested via an, via an over-the-air update within 90 days. Um, and three lower severity issues remain unfixed, though. So of the 11, Samsung was already on top of, you know, I can't do the math, eight of them mm -hmm. uh, within 90 days. So at least Samsung reacted and... and well, they have yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. they'll be in big trouble. Yeah. With They're just like, nah... You know, yeah, maybe, maybe next week we'll get to that update. But but this go this goes to show that you know Google has as as much control as they have over Android. 
every OEM that then adds their own software to it adds another layer of potential danger, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. That's, that's how it is. <laughs> I, I was gonna, um, I was gonna say, um, it's just interesting to see the shift of how OEMs are gradually trying to make Android a little less bloated because of all the security blowups that happened this year, mm. and I haven't really seen. Like, I'm curious to see what Samsung's going to do next year with its next flagship, what the right. software is going to look like, if it's going to look any different, if it's going to be any more pared down. Because we can't we can't keep living like this. We can't keep living with, like, these really heavy interfaces that require, they just require so much maintenance. Now, we, hey, it's gotten a lot better. Oh, Come yeah, on, definitely. You're not giving them credit. Like, it's, it is miles better than it used to be. Holy crap. It's, like, so much... I, it, I mean, it still doesn't like get all gummed up and bogged down like it like it used to. Right. I, I'm I'm really happy with with uh, the the direction Samsung has went with the software. Of course, yeah, I'd love it if they just made all of their apps uninstallable. Um, but the biggest problem that I have actually rests with the carriers. Yeah, I was just about to to jump and say I mean, that they're it's the ones the that destroy bloat. the phones, not Samsung. Yeah. I mean, here's another thing, too, that, that we have to think about is, okay, so you got Android, then Samsung takes Android and builds their thing for it. You know, they build their thing, and then the carriers are given that software, and they add their own stuff. I believe that carriers actually tweak the software as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another, like, layer of, yeah. uh, of something that could be messing with security. And, you know, I mean, how secure are all of these, like, cookie-cutter carrier apps either you know like, like there's a, a lot of factors to it and i think like the biggest the biggest problem for me is the carrier stuff yeah i agree so, so dom are you what, what is your daily driver phone like are you full samsung or which one are you using no I, well i'm i'm not full samsung i would love to be full samsung but unfortunately other phones come out I, I i can tell you my my favorite camera on a smartphone right now is definitely like the s6 note 5 yep. you know the yeah. sensors like that just it's it's really great, um, but I have been using the six P. Um, so I, I, this is kind of weird, but my normal routine is um, I'm always carrying at least two phones. I have the latest iPhone that is out, and then the latest Nexus device that I'm using, or not Nexus device, Android device that I'm using. So right now that happens to be the six P. Okay. And uh, so so yeah. what what was it before the six P? Before the 6P, it was the 5X. Okay, and before the 5X? <laughs> before the 5X, it was the... Uh, Didn't you have the Edge Plus in uh, Berlin? Yeah, I go through... I mean, literally every two weeks, I have a different phone in my, in my pocket. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I, and my SIM cards just do like musical chairs. Um, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I went... I was, uh, I was in the V10 as well for, for a moment. And before that, it was the Moto X... And uh, then I was uh, in. I was in the six plus. I was in the Mate S. Uh, it's just all over the place. I mean, name it. Name an Android smartphone or an iPhone. And I've I've used it. So it, so 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 the the eternal question is somebody like me who's you know on a Nexus five and I'm looking to upgrade this this winter. Uh, which one w w of all those phones? Which one is the is the best buy for a power user on Android right now? Somebody like me. I mean, what, well, it depends what you're looking for, really. That's that's a very generic question. You know what I mean? Like, um, I I always recommend the Galaxy devices to people yeah. all the time, just because I'm a big fan of. You know, I, I, here's the thing: we may nitpick about some of these software things, but a lot of just general consumers out there really like all the stuff that Samsung puts in there. Um, all the little things, you know what I mean? Not not the carrier blower. I'm not talking about all like the disgusting stuff. But um, man, it's hard to it's hard to say no to like a Galaxy S6 or an S6 Active. Um, S6 Active is pretty nice too. That's the thing. So like I've I've never used a Samsung device. I've always been turned off by the, either the the software bloat or the hardware or whatnot. And it's not until this round of Samsung devices, mainly with the Edge, the Edge is what impressed me the most, or I even considered it. But even then, I wouldn't, I, like, I, for some, I've, yeah. I, like, I, I couldn't even tell you why, but I definitely am one of those people who've got the Samsung reality distortion field bias 
That is, you know, just like, no, like these, are, these aren't for me, you know, yeah. So. The Moto camera really mixed move. up for it. Yeah, does it? The camera, oh, the camera yeah. quality of the S6 Edge definitely makes up for, for all the blue. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I would say, though, for you, I think the best move is a Moto X Pure. Oh, because yeah. Because it's not a Nexus, and it's not like a super skin-themed thing. It's got some light stuff going on. Still a solid build, metal frame. You customize it, you know, how you want it on Motomaker. Like it's, I think that's a good, that's a good non-Nexus uh, smartphone out there. I mean, the camera is pretty good on it too. You know, it's not yeah. the best, but it's definitely not the worst. It has a couple more right? features than a Nexus 5X too for yeah. like 20 bucks more. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No I, fingerprint sensor though. So if you're interested yeah. in that yeah. for Android pay, you don't get yeah. that with the yeah, I mean, as of right now, I mean, like, I was leaning toward because I'm I'm not a big fan of the big phones, the six P, like you know, so like I it's a uh, it's a liability. It's a, it's a large it's, phone. It, it's you a have a, is it, it's right? is yeah, but I have a large, purse, so it's yeah. fine. <laughs> Moto no, X I mean, is the is is pretty large as well. It's yeah. it's larger than uh, um, than the five X, or is it the same? No, it's larger. Yeah, it's five point seven. The GS6 Edge is really nice for just putting in your pocket, yeah. honestly. Yeah. It's just like a nice, small little phone. Fits into most hoodies. Yeah. Oh. You know? Mm -hmm. Who knows? It's gonna, I'm going to agonize this over a couple of I feel of like months. I really want to go with you when you buy your phone. Like, I, well, I just want to make a go day out gonna, of it. I'm going to go to a web page and click. I'm not going to do You that. should make it into a thing, though. <laughs> like, it should be like a cute signeta or People something. People don't go like, to stores enough. Like, that's that's what you know, I love to do. Yeah. I, I love buy you to go flowers. to stores. <laughs> And like, like just celebrate. We'll go to Cha Cha Cha. Well, I'm, I'm I'm really really interested in the next bit, and so like that, and yeah. you know, from a design standpoint, so. it depends how long you can wait. Exactly, that's the question. So we'll see. Yes. I don't know. Who knows? I basically I just want to keep the entire audience on the edge of their seats, wondering what fun yeah. we get for yeah. as long as possible. But you gotta do a, you gotta do a big reveal though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. On the yeah. show, you yeah. can't just be like, oh look, guys, I got this phone. Yeah. We gotta like. Uh, you know, because I, I was I was like, oh, 5X, boom, done. But yeah. everything I've read has yeah. got me, you know, not on board with the 5X. Really? So, yeah. I've heard mm. it's not as good. Yeah. So. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know. it's okay. I can tell you that I've been, I've had some pretty, I know you don't like the 6P, but I've had some pretty outstanding battery life on the 6P. Yeah, yeah. same. To the point where I'm just like, oh, like, what, is this real life? Why is it you know not I mean? dying? I mean, no, that's like, okay. Seriously. Please don't die ever. Okay, I'm, I mean, this is kind of nerdy stuff, but I'm at 75% and I have uh, two hours and 30 minutes of screen on time. Wow. Wow. That's ridiculous. Wow. You can watch an indie movie and a half. Like, <laughs> that's, I mean, it's, you know, it's so ridiculous and it's just like, I, I, you can see where Doze kicks in though, in like the, in the battery yeah. stuff. You can see where, where the Doze starts to kick in and where it actually starts to save your battery life. And this, this, this case may be true for a lot of marshmallow devices, but I can say it's not true for the 5X because, uh, I, I mean, battery life was just kind of all right. Yeah. On that phone, and 6P seems to be a lot better. But so, so, so to give to give context to the numbers that you just gave, I'm looking at my Nexus Five, right? My old Nexus Five, and I've got 30% battery left right now. Okay, um, I've got an hour and 56 minutes left according to it. But if I look at my screen time, that has been one hour and 12 minutes of, of screen time in the since the last full charge. Well, see, you're not a, you're not a huge smartphone user, though, right? You're not like always on your phone doing uh, things, are you? I'm pretty always on my phone. Yeah. It's like, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it just seems like like it it doesn't seem too. You're running Marshmallow though as well, right? Yeah, I am. I am. Because I can see the little do you can see the doze notches in your. Well, no, uh, the, your yeah, that's that's either a combination of doze or when I because the thing is with the Nexus Five, I have to plug it in at my desk when I'm working. So like through the oh, day. Oh yeah, that so, makes sense. So that so I'm used to the the common practice of put my phone in, commute to work, get to my desk, plug it in, go to lunch, yeah. plug it's it in when I get in. back. Yeah, it's always plugged in, and I and I carry three batteries in my bag because the battery, the battery in your just, back pocket yeah, as you're exactly, walking down the yeah. street to get tacos. Yeah. It's tragic. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but uh, Moto Moto X Pure was was uh, was an outlier. So Dom, maybe I'll check that out. I'll, I'll spend a little more time with it and see. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think you like it. It is. Cool. It is cool. All right, well, that's a little teaser for hardware, but before we go to hardware, we want to thank one of our sponsors for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. We want to thank Linda, because lynda.com is the best. Lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to take better photos, learn how to develop an Android app, improve your Excel skills, or master Photoshop. Lynda.com is everything you need to feed your curious mind. Lynda.com's latest courses include getting started with After Effects uh, 2015, 
Up and Running with Premiere Elements 14, Up and Running with Photo Magico, Music Production Secrets, and Up and Running <laughs> with, <laughs> with FL Studio 12. There's also Burt Monroy's weekly Pixel Playground series where Burt walks you through the fun self-contained Photoshop or Illustrator project and Photo Tools weekly series with Jan Kabili where you can learn new imaging editing techniques in just a few minutes. And lynda.com is fantastic for somebody like me who is a rusty programmer and I've gone in and I've been uh, learning a little more SQL skills as well as Python, things like that. Lynda has these great tutorials that make it super easy to learn on, at my own pace. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching. You can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn on your own schedule. Courses are structured so you can watch them from start to finish or consume them in bite-sized pieces. You can browse each course transcript to follow along or search for an answer and skip to that point. You can take notes as you go and refer to them later and download tutorials and watch them on the go, including access on your Android device. Create and save playlists of courses you wanna to watch to customize your learning path or share with friends, colleagues, and team members. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. So whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to visit lynda.com slash allaboutandroid and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's lynda.com slash allaboutandroid. And as always, we thank them for their support and for being awesome. Cool. So let's, uh, let's move into some hardware. I kind of want to sign up for Lynda now. Go for it. Learn something new. <laughs> All right. So Florence, uh, what's, what's, what's the latest in one in, in one plus land? What, well, you still can't buy a phone without an invite, but <laughs> now they have a new phone, the one plus X. Um, little thing about this phone. So kind of weird it. So first of all, it comes in, in two flavors, uh, a ceramic version and an onyx black glass version. Both are actually really quite stylish. Very nice design uh, from one plus but only the ceramic one will be available, or sorry, let me rephrase that. <laughs> only the black onyx one will be available here in the US. Um, yeah. The ceramic one will only be available overseas. Yeah. Also, and the ceramic of, one is very limited too. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I know Dom that you got a chance to, to play with it. Um, what did you think about it? Even though it like, I'm sort of weirded out by the fact that they put a Snapdragon 801 in that, which is last year's flagship processor you mean like two or three years ago flat fra flagship processor? yeah i know like but I, ago, yeah 2014 <laughs> flagship yeah it's, like, it's the 2014 flagship killer didn't yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> but seriously um okay so like the the ceramic versus onyx thing I, I, eh, it's just a back you know what i mean like it's literally just like the it doesn't i don't feel like it's going to change how i feel about the phone regardless mm -hmm. of which kind of one that I have. And, and yeah, like they, they said that the other one's going to be, the ceramic one's going to be extremely limited because it's a very hard process. Yes, yeah, like so it was make, like 24 yeah. days for each phone that they make or something like that. Well, no, like they that. said some kind of crazy uh, stat too. Like I, let me see if I have it in my, in my notes here. I, they said something like they would make like a hundred of these and only like mm -hmm. you know, 20 of them were good enough to use or something like that. Uh, it was just, I don't, that wasn't the exact, you know, uh, number that they gave, but it was something to the tune of that to where it just, uh, it, it's a hard thing. And so that's why it's super limited. And I guarantee like 95% of people out there aren't going to see one of these. Um, so, you know, whatever. I mean, just, that, that's a not a big deal. It, it, it's a bummer, I guess. Sounds like it looks so what, nice. So what's the point then? So the point uh, of this phone, it's a $250 phone. It's just yeah. a really affordable, it's, nice it's looking phone. Fire. It's hot fire. I mean, yeah. Yeah. this thing just murders everything in its price range. Yeah, I mean, even with the uh, older processor, yeah. which is even with the yeah. older processor, it just murders everything, and it's and it's really fantastic. Like I even had a chance to use the camera, and, and though the, well, the camera that I used, I'm assuming that it was like beta software, but the pictures that I took from that thing were pretty awesome. Um, I was yeah. really surprised. The sensor on the uh, OnePlus 2 was really good too, so I'm not surprised. It's not the same sensor though. Right, it's, it's supposed to be it's like a different sensor. slightly improved. I think it might be better than the OnePlus 2 sensor. Right. I don't know. Just uh, These are just brief thoughts on my, you know, four <laughs> hours thoughts. with the phone. Um, is, because is, I, is four I, hours I, enough time to get to, to get to the point of, to make a decision? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's like spending I, I mean, four hours with a girl. 
Don't yeah. you like know by the end of four hours if you want to spend more time with her or not? Yeah, 15 minutes, four yeah. hours, same thing. <laughs> so women take a while. I mean, I don't know what to say. You could have wine yeah, and dine, dine them, Ron. I know, I'm kidding. I'm joking. It is a great phone. I, I, I mean, I think it's a great phone. It, you can't, anything, it, the hard part is, is that anything that I have to say bad about it, it you know, it, it, if, if I find a lot of things that I don't like about it or whatever, at the end of the day, it's two hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. and I just right. have to eat my words and shut up because of that. Because it's, I mean, it's two hundred fifty dollars. Like, oh, okay, yeah. it doesn't have a fingerprint scanner. Well, it's two hundred fifty dollars. Well, yeah, one, oh, one plus the makes not as bright. Well, it's two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, know? one plus makes really solid devices. My only issue is is the invite system is yeah. a little. Little much to contend with in this day and well, age. It's tired. Of instant here's, here's gratification, you know. Yeah. Here's what they said. Here's what they they said about that invite thing is, um, so after it, it, when the sales go live, I believe it's November seventeenth or nineteenth in the in the U.S. Um, one of those two days. November fifth anyway. is when the invites begin. Uh, but that's for that's yeah. for Europe. Oh, November nineteenth is when it goes on yes. sale. Yeah. yeah. So November nineteenth, a month after that launch. Um, every week they're going to do a, uh, a day where they're going to have like an hour long, uh, one day a week, an hour long open window for anybody that they wants to, to order this device. So you don't have to wait for an invite with this. Just wait a month, watch the reviews, see if it's something you really want to buy. And then once that open sale day comes around once a week after 30 days, uh, after it being on sale for 30 days or whatever, then you can just order it. I mean, so there are invites. Yes. But they're trying to to do this better, and and I feel like a lot of it is um, they're they're constrained, you know, uh, with production and stuff. I mean, uh, but, but are they? I mean, call, call me old fashioned, but but where I come from, you cr you start a business and you create a product and you make the product to let people buy it. And, I mean, but really, how yeah. much money? How much money do you think they could be banking just off of selling all these like super cheap phones? But, like, no, I don't but, think but, that they're that's rolling what, in dough. But, but it's not like they're not funded. I mean, that's the, that's yeah. the thing is that like yeah. it's it like I get it for the one plus one. I get it. Like mm -hmm. this is our first phone. Mm -hmm. We're a new company. We're being disruptive. I get it. Oh, the, that word. The the, oh. the the the, in, the <laughs> hey, at least they're not pivoting. At least they're not yeah, pivoting. right. Um, <laughs> They, uh, you know, and so, you know, the invite system creates demand. It gets people talking. We talked about it. It's kind of exciting, all stuff like that. That was a year and a half ago. Yeah. Right? And so now you've released not only one phone, but you've released the this, this sequel or the, mm -hmm. the, the, the second model of that mm -hmm. phone, right, of your flagship killer, right? And you've got funding. You've got people behind you. You know, just make an order and sell phones, and then if you sell out, make more. I yeah. mean, this is oh, wait. this is it's 2015. It's this isn't 2005. Like yeah. we, we, like there, like how many cell phone manufacturers are there? Smartphone manufacturers out there? Like this isn't hard. So I mean, I get it. I get the idea of creating a frenzy, and and but like honestly, like one hour once a week, 30 days after it goes on sale, that I might have a chance to get one. Like do you do you, like I want to give you my money. Take it. You know, like, I don't know. I just see, I don't know. The, the, the guy I mean, who never took a business I, class that's, inside that's of me screams. Too. So. That's the thing, though. It's like, why would they intentionally just avoid taking people's money? Right. What, that See, that that doesn't make any sense to me. So, like, that leads me to believe that maybe there's something greater that we don't understand. Maybe it's not that they're having production things. Maybe it's yeah. not this or that. But maybe there's, there's some a greater reason. greater force at play here. Yes, because there's no force. reason. Like, if, if, if. 500,000 people are trying to throw $250 at you. You're going to yeah. put out a bag and start catching it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's, if there's wants no to throw reason for them not to. Wait, I'm not going to say I mean, that, if, the, if, the fo if the phone is as good as Dom says for $250, they should have no problem selling them. So show some confidence in your product. I think that that's what it, I think there's a- Yeah, I don't know what it is. You know, it's weird. Th there's a certain level of caution that you want to take because you, you don't want to make bad business decisions and you don't want to, you know, jeopardize your, you know, your bottom line, all yeah. that sort of stuff. But like at some point, you either got to put up or shut up. That's, and that's- yeah. I agree. Yeah, so. That's well little, said, Ron. There's a, there's a little rant, so. Um, I like your rant. Okay, but moving on, it has been such a long time since we've had some ridiculous hardware that we can laugh at. And I'm so thankful our friends at Samsung. You're going to laugh at this? Really? Of course I'm going to laugh at it. It's an 18-inch tablet. Okay, oh, go on. Yeah. Go on. It's, I, it's I, I read a tweet about that at some point. This tablet is bigger than the television I brought to college in my dorm room. 
<laughs> wow, that was a small telly. Well, it was also 20 years ago, but think about it. Uh, yeah, so Samsung announced the Samsung Galaxy View, which is an 8-inch tablet slash TV. 18. Um, 18, 18-inch. 18 <laughs> you can basically carry around. I believe the quote is that this is the TV that kids can touch and play with. Um, no way. No, that's not. Is that official? Look at it. Yes, look at this. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, the wording that you said, it's a TV that kids can touch. Yes. Yes. They did not see that. Wait, hang on. It's in it's in the article. Wait, where is it? Uh, Cats and dogs can touch it too. Let's see. For so can so, forces so, of nature. So uh, Bornheimer, what's his first? What's the first? What's the person name? Bornheimer. Sean Bor Bornheimer, the senior manager of product for Samsung Design, right? He said that for kids, this finally becomes the TV they can touch. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop it, Samsung. This is what my yeah. children have to so, look forward to. So, so just to, just to run down the specs here, uh, it's an 18.4 inch tablet. It's got a, a 1920 by 1080 resolution, so it's full HD, but it's not 4K. It's not like come on. I mean, give us 1440p at least. Well, uh, right. So you can. With me? It's a starter device. A starter come device. on now. So <laughs> you can. Um, so then the natural question is: Is that how long will, my, will the battery last? How much TV can right. I watch on this? Or how whatnot? much TV? How much TV can you watch? Um, it, it. The battery is a 5700 milliamp hour battery, which gives you eight hours of That's continuous it? video. 5700. But in that hours big of a space, eight hours. They could only fit. 57, what? that's the size of most like uh, seven to eight inch oh. tablets. 5, yeah. Bigger tablets have like over oh. over 9,000 yep. milliamp battery packs. <laughs> well, so, so they're boasting eight hours of continuous video. Um, it's run, It's got a 1.6 gigahertz uh, processor with two gig of RAM, Wi-Fi only, um, and it's got 32 gig of storage and si or 64 gig of storage, and it will have a micro SD, uh, SD card slot, so you can expand that out to 128 gig. Um, and it is going to be on sale in early November for five hundred ninety nine dollars. So six hundred bucks, not too bad as a TV for your kid. Well, actually, that's ridiculous. Why are you spending so much money on your children? Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. Gonna, no, they're you, just you gonna need to buy them make a fifty dollar Amazon Fire and call it. A yeah, day. exactly. Get them a fifty dollar <laughs> tablet. It's all they need. Seriously. Yeah. Um, no, I don't understand. Like Samsung releases like twelve tablets a year, and not that many this year. In their defense, no, they didn't do as many okay. this year. Last year they released. They I, did, it's yeah. Last year was tablets, um, and and previous years too. I mean, there's like, there's like five different versions of each tablet they release, and then, but but anyway, I I just I don't understand the need for, like, <laughs> what does it do? There's a there's a market benefit, there's a market you know? that's coming out. And I think we're gonna start seeing it more at CES. We're gonna start seeing these like portable home entertainment systems, which I realize sounds weird, but people are trying, or companies are trying to reinvent the kitchen gadget. So well, no, instead like, of buying game? like an all-in-one, you know, HP at Costco for 400 bucks, and I'm saying this based on just sort of what I've been seeing in the industry, it's now they're looking to make tablets into those like kitchen gadgets that you, no, you know. I, I've seen um, so some I think stuff. That's, yeah. I've seen some stuff from. I'm pretty sure uh, we've seen the same things. Oh, it's the thing oh, that we uh, Alcatel. I shouldn't the, talk about. The or, okay, Alcatel. Yeah, we can talk I, about I TCL. posted about that, so that's not under embargo, I hope. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, w I didn't want to mention it because I wanted to throw you under the I bus I took the first. fall. It's fine. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, yeah, that, that kind of thing. I get it, but, like, with the Samsung thing, like, what is the gimmick? You know what I mean? Like, everything has – even the iPad Pro – well, of course, Apple has a gimmick with their stuff. Yes, it but, has a pencil that sticks out of its side. <laughs> Yes, which is which never is mind. Funny. That's another it's like podcast. Like somebody stabbed well, it. And I, I also and I also thought that at 13 inches was enormous and laughable. But yeah, yeah. Eight, 18 inches. Like so, I, I have a Nexus yeah. Nine. So this is the equivalent of two Nexus Nines joined together. And the Nexus it's Nine ridiculous. is too big for me. Yeah. Well, what's the aspect ratio on that thing? Uh, 69. Ooh. Oh, okay. So, so it's like carrying a uh, definitely carrying like a little TV in your yeah, pocket that's, that's or all, backpack. Yeah. Does this even fit in a backpack? Never mind. I mean, does it fit in the back seat of a car? It probably like a back, does. A backpack. I would probably have to put it in between the driver and the passenger, so the people behind me could watch it. What 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 I, what I love is that is that they're they're boasting how the Galaxy View is basically it's designed to be portable. I mean, it's got a kickstand, so you could just prop it's a, it's it up a briefcase. and watch it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like you take, could take it upstairs. Take it take it to every take it to every room with you. You could yeah. take it to the beach. You take could it take it. The, yeah, it's just enormous. Like and there's a and it's wide enough that you can have a small crowd watching the same movie you're watching at the same time. <laughs> can you imagine all the cuddling that they want to have happen around this device? 
It's so, so much when, cuddling. When people are going to start bringing that on planes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, people already bring so I mean, this is basically just, this is basically a TV running Android. I mean, that, that's what, and running touch with. Like, that's like, and like, and so but now, thank God it's got Samsung's split screen functionality. Multi-view, yeah. So you could be, Multi-view you could actually be watching yeah. something, you could be watching something while, while you're doing. While going on Facebook. Because you know, yeah. Lord knows I can't just watch TV. I have to be doing something else. It's just enormous. Like I bring my, I bring my Nexus 9 to the gym to watch TV at the, the gym. <laughs> and like, imagine this, if I pulled this thing out and put it like. It's like you could work out like, with it. What is 18 inches? Like this is like, that's like that big, right? Oh, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, giant. this is 13 inches. So this is five more inches from this. From the from the corner of the display, right? Mind you. Yeah, there's exactly. another there's another half inch or so on each side of the display. Oh, that's crazy! I just love I love crazy hardware. This is fantastic. Do you want to hear about more crazy hardware? Of course. Uh, now a change of topic. We're going on <laughs> to the BlackBerry Priv, which we've been talking for quite a bit. But today, you're really excited about. I, I have not been excited about it, but today, uh, CNET published a nice lengthy interview with BlackBerry's head of devices, Ron Luke's. Uh, I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He uh, is kind of the guy who helped convince BlackBerry to kind of join forces with Google and load Android onto the device, you know, try something new, steer away from the the BlackBerry of the past. Um, now, it's a pretty long article. Definitely, if you have some free time tonight, you know, go and check it out. But uh, a couple takeaways from it, okay. which I thought were interesting. Number one is that John Chen, the C- now CEO of BlackBerry, said that he'll dump the smartphone business if the Priv doesn't turn a profit. Wow. So that's wow. Pretty... So, so they're going to dump the smartphone business. <laughs> which is, or business if it doesn't turn a profit. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, so there's, they, there's a lot at stake there. Whole business a of lot of I mean, um, <laughs> and also a nice little stat in there from from IDC is that BlackBerry powered smartphones now represent less than half percent of a market that's led by so less than half percent uh, market share right now. In two thousand nine, they were controlling a fifth of the market, right behind Nokia. And now kings. look at the way things have shifted. Yeah. And th- crazy, think, yeah. think about where the market share was in yeah. 05. Yeah. I mean, it was dominant. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in case you don't know, ATT will be the first carrier here in the US to carry the Priv, which goes on sale this Friday. So, that's so going to be. So, are you lining up to get your Priv? Are you no, getting your time in the Priv? No, I'm not. No? I think I'm, I think I'm going to take one for the team, you guys. I'll, I'll get one. Yeah. That's really? A, uh, we'll take a it's look at it. It's $700. That's a I'm lot so of money. Intrigued. I'm so You I might as well buy a Galaxy View. At least you can maybe, watch TV on it and you maybe know if, the maybe interface. Maybe it's my purchase. Maybe it's my purchase that helps BlackBerry live on. Why don't you give your money to charity instead? It's a lot more useful. Because I feel like <laughs> it's, it's such an interesting so device. About like, this. here, okay, here's the thing. Here's one of the, the nostalgic things for me is... I was I, I had the original like uh, one of the original Motorola Droids with the keyboard, you know. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. Oh, I lo- that action it was so satisfying. The little yep. Sh- the click. You know, yep. The, oh, yeah, I remember. Push yep. down the keyboard. So like that ties into it for me, and the fact that um, I haven't used a BlackBerry since the storm. So uh, or not the storm. Um, the uh, phew, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, screen presses down the entire thing. Oh, the sidekick. Help me. No. no, that was oh. uh, that was there was a later one that did that. That though. was sh- uh, sharp, and then later danger. Or, right, it was whatever. I don't know. Anyway, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had a BlackBerry experience for a while, and it's different. I mean, it's 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 kind of weird, you know. Well, I we like we, we talked we talked on the show about the allure of a physical keyboard. I've never used a BlackBerry PT Dubs. Well, no, but but I I well, I used the BlackBerry years ago, like like oh three oh four, but. I've had a I had a physical keyboard up until after the G one the Nexus one was my first non physical keyboard and I agonized over it I I'm like I need a physical keyboard I don't want any of this on screen keyboard and I haven't had one since so I'm I tempted I'm by so the physical used. keyboard I, I mean it's a novelty but I'm very used to yeah. life without it I lasted up until I got my HTC Incredible which was my first Android phone yeah. I, had a, I had texting phones up until then with key, physical keyboards but they were big enough so that if I had long nails or just got my nails done. It didn't get in the middle, but yeah. the BlackBerry keyboards were always a little too small for me. Right. They yeah, it was. Out. It was the BlackBerry storm, by the way. Yeah. I was right the first time, and then I messed up. <laughs> well, we'll we'll see this Friday when the Priv comes out. Hopefully, we yeah, get yeah, our hands yeah. we can get our hands on one and see for yes. ourselves. Uh, take it to the Priv. 
and the privy. And so <laughs> the the priv. <laughs> I know you're trying to make a a a, a, a toilet joke. joke. It's a yes, toilet joke. But I was I yeah. was doing uh, you know, sexy back. Take it to the bridge. Okay. Take it to the priv. I don't know. I took that too far. Well, sometimes when you have to explain it, it doesn't work. We can work. move on to the next segment. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> that said, speaking of hardware and getting new devices, we want to thank Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Uh, Gazelle is the trusted marketplace for buying and selling used electronics. You can trade in your old device for cash or buy a certified pre-owned one or do both. For trade-ins, simply visit gazelle.com, find your device, and get an instant quote. Shipping is free and payment is fast. If you're looking to buy a certified pre-owned device, Gazelle has a variety of Samsung Galaxy phones to choose from. Each device is fully inspected and backed by a 30-day return policy and sold without a carrier contract. So if you're like me and you're looking to uh, upgrade to a new device, but your old device still functions and works great, you can get some cash for it, or you can find your new device at Gazelle. You can go to gazelle.com and see what your old device is worth and check out the selection of certified pre-owned devices today. You don't want to miss out on getting the best value on certified pre-owned devices. Uh, when you buy a certified pre-owned device from Gazelle, the, all the devices are available in good and excellent conditions. Good condition shows some gentle signs of wear and tear, but offers consumers great prices on still great devices. All devices have been put through a rigorous 30-point inspection process, ensuring that they are in perfect working order. Uh, devices are available for support by all the major character, carriers, such as AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint. So give new life to used electronics. Trade in for cash or buy certified pre-owned. Visit gazelle.com today, and we thank them for their support. I wonder if they have Blackberries. I, I don't think so. I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out. I like the idea of giving new life to old. It's like taking, it's like a puppy. It's like the pound. It's like, oh, take this phone. It's, it's got, it's, it's still got life in it. So. Oh, <laughs> you guys adopt old dogs if you can. They still deserve yeah, a home. So. Okay. Well, we got a lot of apps to get through and a change of events. So let's go to apps. All right, so I feel like the past couple of weeks have been very hardware dominant, so it's nice to see the app section coming back in full strength. Oh, God, today's, lot, app yeah, today's app section is Today's app section is very huge. Long, so. But um, Here we go. there is a lot to talk about from uh, the Google, the, the Googleplex. The, the Goog is pushing out pushing out apps left and right. Uh, so first up, uh, I'm going to go blow through a bunch of these stories, and Dom, Flo, chime in if you have any comments about them. But, of course, uh, users can now record and publish their video gameplay from the Google Play Games app. So the continuing movement of uh, sharing gameplay videos, uh, we saw YouTube, the YouTube Games channel open up. We see Twitch. Now you can publish your gameplay uh, from the Google Play Games. Who wants app. to watch me play Pokemon Shuffle? <laughs> I want to try that tonight. Just crickets. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if it'll work. I guess it, it, does it only work with games that have Google Play Games integration? Uh, that I, is I would assume. That yeah, um, I, I would assume that's kind of you know by okay. By, by well, then you can there. watch me yeah. play Peggle Blast. Yeah, <laughs> Peggle is a fun game. It is, but I have I have like finished most of it. Oh no! So no, I used to play Peggle back in the day on like PC, man. Oh, like so did I, Peggle. alongside with a Saint Aquarium. So oh, I was I was a hardcore Peggle fan. Peggle Knights, ooh, Peggle Knights is <laughs> Peggle Knights sounds like a nightclub with lots of like half naked women, and I just. Love imagining Dom right now in a nightclub <laughs> called Peggle Nights. I'm really sorry. I'm you going there. Say, I, you have to agree with me that Peggle is one of the most addictive games. It is. That's why I, I have given PopCap slash EA so much money for yeah. that damn game. When, so, when, when the Peggle app first came out, I was, oh, it was over. I know what to get Dom for Christmas. So, so uh, um, Google reported that there's over 144 billion minutes of gaming videos and live streams oh that have been watched on YouTube. So everybody who blasted me when I made fun of uh, people watching gameplay videos, uh, I do that I'm now wrong. on Twitch. I, yeah. well, I some, hate to become. Someone on Twitter got in my face and they're like, "You you watch live streams of people playing pinball so and like, you watch baseball? It's the same thing." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah it is the it same. It is thing. the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm. You I'm, watch dudes hitting each other in I'm MMA. Act, I'm act, well, I don't do watch that. No, I know, but some people do. So uh, to use the new feature, they do. The, the game does have to be in the Google Play uh, Play Games app. You just tap the record button. You can capture 720p or 480p video. Um, and it publishes uh, directly to YouTube games, and uh, it's going to roll out uh, to users in the U.S. and the U.K., and Google has plans to expand globally soon. Uh, so moving on, uh, I'm a big fan of Google Keep, and now uh, Drawing Mode is now live in Google Keep. 
um, along with an updated widget. I know we get excited when we've got new widgets. Yes, but, uh, we do. But yeah, so Google Keep is uh, the great application that is kind of uh, Google's Evernote killer, which allows you to take notes and uh, access them pretty easily. And now they've added the ability where you can draw within them, which actually you think would be kind of odd, but it's pretty handy when you like want to sketch something. Like, oh, I've got an idea for with something your physical. finger, though. I'm fine with that. I've done. I've used drawing apps with my finger. Galaxy Note Five. Yeah. So. All right. This is any update to Keep. I'm cool with. Keep, right, yeah, keep yeah, yeah. Is a power yeah. As long as yeah. Keep doesn't go the way of Google Wave, we're gonna be fine. Well, yeah, I, as I long as they keep it around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Google. There, have you noticed a lot of flurry around like meeting apps and like I feel like I'm Microsoft so had exhausted one. by it. I'm like <laughs> nobody wants to hang out with me that badly. Well, so so in a move that uh, can only uh, that reminds me of uh, what was it, Poochie on The Simpsons. Um, <laughs> Uh, Google's got a new app called Who's Down. Uh, Who's to, down to hang? To you show. wanna hang out, bro? <laughs> look at just look at the first screen where it's like the like Who's Down? Who's down? Like it's Google trying to be hip. Come on, millennials, <laughs> let's hang out with our Android phones. Who's down? <laughs> and what's great is look at the third screen where it says like the conversation amongst friends. Who's hey, I'm down for tacos. Looks like Jerry's down too. Where do you guys want to meet? Like everyone's down. Yeah, <laughs> some dude down. named Jerry wants tacos. I don't believe that. Dude Isn't named Jerry does not eat tacos. That doesn't. No, wait, this is a hang. This is this is a real thing. This is a real app yeah. that basically. As if tacos wasn't enough reason to hustle. But, but isn't isn't this isn't this Hangouts? No, no, no. So this is actually real life. This is planning real life events. So who wants to come to my wedding? Yeah. Who's well, down? How, how is, so if, so how, is, how is asking my hey, are you down for tacos on Hangouts? How is that not real life? Right, it, right, yeah, no, but this is just for finding out who's down. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so seriously, look at look, uh, Brian, pull back up the screenshots if you scroll down, right? Oh. So one slider to see who's free to hang out. Show your friends that you're down. Right, and then customize what you're down for. I feel like this is gonna go down a dark road. It's, it's gonna, gonna get gonna a little. Go it's gonna get a little Tinder up in here. This is just yeah. Google's. But like, like, scroll, like, so instantly know <laughs> like which of your friends are free, and if you if, down for whatever. If you yeah. if you look if you look at the list of people who are down to get together, Kimberly Smith is anyone down to grab lunch? Mishka Vora, anyone down to work out? Anyone down to watch a movie? Like, can you only so, say are down? you are you okay being alone? You know, the most important love in life yeah. is self love. <laughs> All people. of these people are sad. They're all alone right now. I know. I just want to hug, go over and hug them. Who's down for a hug? <laughs> down with each Like, why don't they just, like, go hang out with each other? Like, hey, oh, well, we can go grab lunch and then go work out. You right. know what I mean? Like, why are all these people alone together or not, like, not together? Like, Maybe you just, guys should, like, be together. This is so weird. All I know is that I'm not, I haven't been down enough. And I, apparently I need to get out more by being down. So, I'm gonna um, install this app and like send you a well, down and be like, "Hey, Ron, are you it, down?" It's it's invite only, so you need oh. to, so someone needs to determine <laughs> that you're down to be on the app. Which so if anyone has an invite to who's down, see, I would. See, here's the thing, I can give and not to bring this up again, but I can give, kind of give the OnePlus situation a pass. But this Google <laughs> invite, like, really? Hey, it's hip and cool, Dom. Get with the program. Come oh, on now. Is, uh, which is what is great is that it, like going to the going to the uh, Play Store listing and Brian I'm putting it into the chat. Uh, the description is right? who's oh, down. Always know oh. who's free to hang out so you never miss out on the fun. So Google is completely playing so much for FOMO. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like now you have total FOMO. <laughs> now we're gonna need to have people go to school just to like give therapy on how to be okay oh. with missing out on stuff. It's this just is amazing. just getting really bad. We're feeding the machine, guys. It's it's amazing. So so there you go. Who's down? And it's 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 got some strong reviews there. It's got four point one stars. Stupid. In the Why there. do I need a dollar or an app? I don't have any friends. But, uh, I'm getting I'm getting on that invite list right now, you guys. So. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm pretty all about soon, this. Pretty soon I'll be down. Uh, yeah, I'm down for this. So I'm down as soon as Google lets me be down. <laughs> so finally, the last uh, Google update uh, to the, one of their apps is to the the fantastically powerful inbox app. Uh, we know we've we've heard Sundar Pichai doesn't have, often have a lot of time to deal with email. Uh, he spends most of his day, you know, working and that sort of thing. Running the world. Exactly. But uh, luckily, he'll be able to use the new smart reply function. Uh, which uses machine learning to speed up your email responses so that you can respond to an, an email with just one tap. Wow. 
Isn't that scary? Wow. Um, so basically, uh, when you get an email, uh, it, the, the, the app will analyze the email and give you three quick options to send back and reply to an email based off the machine learning analysis of the message's content. content. So you can use short replies as a way to quickly respond, or you can tell somebody that you're on the go or don't have, you know, I don't have time to get back mm. to you, I'll get back to you later. So it's a way to respond to that email, but also not really respond to that I'm email. I'm a little so, afraid so what it would do. <laughs> so this is kind of a way to use quick replies, but also let Google read everything that you do. Pretty Pretty much, or, yep. Yeah, well, I, so, but they already do anyway. So, I yeah. mean, what does it matter? Yeah, I gave you know, up on I, that a while ago. I think that I, no. I, I don't. I'm not on that train where I'm like, oh, no, reading my stuff because like you put something on the internet, don't put things you don't like. You know what I mean? Like just. Play it safe on the, I on the, on the internet. I mean, I mean, the, th the thing is, is that we're already, if you live on the internet, we already, um, we already have predictive keyboards, right? So we yeah. already, we're typing and our keyboards are guessing what we're going to say the next word. Based on a dictionary that's stored in the cloud. Right, exactly. Yeah. So like, so honestly, a machine learning based response to an email, if it's something that, because I don't know about you, but in, it often in a lot of my jobs, I have very, they're often repetitive things that you say and repetitive tasks that you do. And so if the app can pick that up and say, hey, I identify this is a question you've been asked before. This is what you said last time. And with one tap, great, I can move on. You know, like I think, mm. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. it's good technology. So who knows? We'll see. I love Inbox. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see this go. So. Well, it's time to talk about another company called Microsoft, which has nothing, well, <laughs> they have something to do with Android this time. Uh, Microsoft just put out or, uh, yeah, put out a new launcher called Aero. The Aero Launcher. The idea behind the Aero Launcher is to offer a different interface for Android that makes it a little easier and quicker to access your most frequently used apps, as well as send messages to friends, take notes, or access your favorite apps and settings. Um, it's, uh, it's a little like Apple's recent Spotlight Search update, um, which now offers suggested apps and contacts when you swipe right on the iOS home screen. Um, it also reminds me a little bit of Yahoo's Aviate, which kind of has the same sort of like, hey, here's some things that you might be interested in. But overall, it's just an another launcher from another company that isn't Google. So that's... But, how I feel about I, that. I feel like Microsoft <laughs> is slowly releasing these little garage projects. Yes, that, that like, I know. And I feel like, like in at the end of like or at, like mid next year, they'll be like, "And here's a phone with all of our products, and they're I, awesome." I would just like if you know, it'd be great if they, if you could, just put Windows on an Android phone. Well, that way I could just like. Why would you want Windows on an Android? Like, no, I just, just want like a button. Okay, this is ridiculous. You want a button with a window. With I the want Windows a button, button on it, that just so like say, like I can plug in my phone to like a thing to a monitor, and then like with Microsoft what, what, Continuum, if, if right? Was, you like plug it in, and then you have like the whole PC just like on a monitor, like from your phone. Or am I just Windows? Totally completely making this up? Yes, I don't know. No, they they have those already. Yes, yes. Right, yeah. but you want that in Android? Yeah. No, I just is that want, called Chrome OS? No, I don't <laughs> want Chrome OS. That's the whole point. I don't want. It. I'm sorry, Hiroshi and everyone. I don't want it. I want Windows. <laughs> you really? Wait. Did you just say I want Windows? <laughs> like, who? who I wants miss Windows. I miss. I'm. I'm, I'm having a bit of a like. I'm having a bit of a of a mid. mid <laughs> uh, an existential computer crisis right okay. now. So because yeah. I just use smartphones all the time and I kind of neglected like desktop computers and you know with Windows 10 I've been really thinking like oh man I kind of want to go back to Windows. I miss right. it. So, I, I, but I'm not. I'm not into a Microsoft launcher. I, I don't want that on my phone. Okay. I I, I walked away from Windows in 2006, and I've never looked back. I know. I kind of did that too, but now I kind of. Uh -huh. And I know Windows some... 10. Windows 10 is nice, and everyone says it's great, but you can touch it. You can't touch this. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. And it costs like so much money. Well, with everything that Microsoft is doing in their garage and with, with uh, Satchamania running wild, I wouldn't be surprised if next year you have that. So, one, Do it for a, a me, girl, Microsoft. A girl can wish. I will so. use your launcher if you can, <laughs> if you can do something extraordinary. I don't, I don't know. I'm, oh. Who am I? Okay, uh, moving on. We, we still got a couple more apps and stories to get through here. Uh, so remember when Apple released uh, an app to the Google Play Store? Remember what happened? It was hilarious. Yeah, it, was, it was hilarious, all yeah. the, the so negative awesome. reviews. Yes. Well, uh, Apple returned to the Google Play Store with a second app, and the same thing happened. Which app is this, Ron? <laughs> so the the companion app for the Beats Pill Plus, the Bluetooth speaker, uh, which now, as we all know, Apple owns Beats, so it's technically an Apple app. Uh, they, they released it to uh, the Google Play Store, 
and uh, the Android faithful trolled the heck out of it. It's got a 2.1 star average rating, and uh, some of the highlights on some of the reviews are the usual hysterical-ness. Um, <laughs> Apple need Android users to stay alive. Amazing how many Apple lovers are giving it five stars, but obviously are using Android to review it. You downloaded the wrong app, people. It's called Move to o o iOS. Go back to where you belong. Jeez. <laughs> Um, I, I love those things. They make they, they make me laugh so much. They're if just, you're having a bad day, just read just read the comments and, sometimes on an app uh, review. And, uh, another good one yeah. that took that took the, the, the beats pill uh literally does not work with my prescription pills. I tried to pair this with my pills, but it simply doesn't work. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> Is it yeah, I just... <laughs> I so, not to laugh into the mic, but yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's funny. If you, if you go to the Google Play Store, you can see all the reviews. It's very funny. And there's some people who actually who tried to give it. Why a does legit... why does it why does a, a speaker need an, a companion app? Just use freaking Bluetooth. Oh, I have my, my Jawbone has a companion app. But I there are some things yeah. that I, I guess that can be used for that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's access to the settings and the controls and like firmware updates ah, and stuff like that. Yeah, I no, see. Yeah. So. I see. Yeah, I want to know when when they're when they're releasing finally releasing Apple Music for Android. Because here's the thing, right? Here's I got a bone to pick. Actually. Okay, oh. here we go, Dom. So, um, I was a, I'm a, I was a Beats Music subscriber, and I used it a whole bunch on my on my Android phones, like all the time, because I could always keep a playlist in sync between iOS and Android because of Beats Music. It just made it easier for me. I know there's Google Play Music, and don't. Let me just go for a second. Well, well, um, yeah, you're you got, going. You got runway, Dom. Yeah, you got just runway. go, go it. Just it. do it. But, Take off. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Apple Music is still not there. They said the fall, and then they just kind of avoided it, and now it's not here. And and I can't use, like, it, I, I can't use um, Beats. There's still a Beats Music app for Android, but they're not, like, accepting things or whatever, I guess. And once I switched my, music, uh, my subscription over to Apple Music, I can't log into the Beats Music app anymore. So I have no streaming app for music on Android. So now in, in Apple's defense, they said this fall and technically they have, they still have till December 21st. I know stupid technicalities. I get it. And they'll probably deliver by then, but come on. Like, I know every, every, everyone, everyone that I've spoken to that has tried Apple music has, I has given up on it, has gone back to Spotify or gone back to RDO or whatever that they're using. Like, the, like I, I, I have not tried it. I have not touched it with a 10 foot pole. Cause I'm very, Google Play Music has got me covered. Like Don't you dare. Me. Yeah. Don't you what? dare. Don't I dare Don't what? touch it. Well, no, I, I was just, Don't. for me, I was a big fan <laughs> of, um, well, of Beats music and the algorithms yeah. that that chose, like, the kind of music that I wanted to listen. It was always just spot on. And and really, I'm sure there are other ones out of the same. I'm not saying that's the best. But for me, it just worked out. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. So I signed up for Beats music. And this was before, like, way, way, way before Apple ever, like, you know, did all this destruction. Yeah. So, um, and, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll sign up for Apple Music because it's the same thing, essentially. And it is. I mean, the music prediction and stuff, it works exactly the same. But I signed up with the, like, mindset that it's coming to Android soon. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it'll be okay. But now I'm starting to, like, pull my hair out. It's not okay, Apple. So, right. where the hell Dom is Dom never Apple? forgot about Dre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not forgetting. I will I, I, I will give Apple Music credit that I've heard that the the radio station stuff has been good, um, but yeah. but the 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 Beats recommendation stuff blew away the songs uh, in Google Play Music. Like my buddy who had Beats Music, uh, it was really nice. But whether or not Apple Music continues to do that, we'll see. But I subscribe uh, to Digitally Imported. That's where I get all of my. That's like. It's live streamed radio that yeah. you pay. See, but I don't want to listen to radio. I want. I, I'm, well, yeah. it's like it's radio curated by. You know, digital DJs, and it's right. it's you can like upvote songs, and but it's like mostly for dance right. music and stuff. So right. yeah. it's very Euro. Cool. Yeah. Right. Moving on. And Snapseed's got some news since we're moving Snapseed. on. Snapseed. I said Snapseed. <laughs> Snapseed's got some news. Um, the app now allows raw editing, which is kind of really cool. Um, Google. Uh, Google had a little blog post about that the other day. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so yeah, Snapseed does raw photo editing. You, you now, were very excited I, about this I before was, the show started. I, just I was, to know and, that. and I'm so sorry that I I um I lost my train of thought there. I apologize. Um, basically, now you can edit photos in raw. <laughs> 
there you snap go. seed. If so that, if that is your excellent. thing, you want to do it, you go ahead. Um, I was going to jump into a little tangent here and say that um, I'm hoping this means that eventually Google will open up its camera app to finally do some manual controls, which we've been seeing a lot of the flagships that came out this right. year. Um, so hopefully this is just like a little... And of course they had to do this because LG's phone does raw... Uh, shoots in raw, Samsung's phones shoot in raw, HTC's phones shoot in raw, so naturally you have to offer right, it. Gotta, gotta edit raw. You gotta, exactly. You gotta yep. make it raw. Gotta make it raw. All right, well then. Uh, and finally, our last bit of app uh, stuff. For those who uh, might be keeping track at home, uh, the Sling TV app, uh, when it came out, it, it, everybody was raving about it because it would allow you to watch uh, cable TV via the Sling TV app and uh, a bunch of different channels, and it was really cool. My big complaint was that it didn't have Chromecast support. And now they do. They've added Chromecast streaming. So if you were on the fence about Sling TV and you Chromecast was the, the one bit that was uh, keeping you on the edge, uh, now you don't have an excuse. So go check that out. Um, and you can watch HGTV to your heart's content. Like I, I loved I loved uh, Sling TV. I was a big fan of Sling TV. I, the only reason I stopped is because I, um, I, I had one a long time ago. And I stopped because I, I started working from home. And then it was like, well, what am I going to what am I going to sling into, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I had no no reason to sling anymore because I was I was all slanged out because I was at home. Yeah, you know? <laughs> didn't didn't need to tap into my TV. So yeah, <laughs> Sling TV is awesome though. Sling TV is great, and honestly, the, I I used the Sling TV app when it first came out um, in the trial period because I wanted to check it out because the idea of of a lot of those cable channels that uh, having them available on demand because I don't have cable like I'm a cord cutter like but there are shows that I do want to watch. Like House Hunters and House Hunters International and Property. I Brothers love House stuff. Hunters yes, International. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I have to say, I'm a big fan of 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 uh, uh, of the Home Channel or whatever HGN, right? H That's yes. what it is. Yeah. HGTV, yeah. yeah. HGTV, HGN is the yeah. awful Property yeah. Brothers, Rockin', um, uh, <laughs> Love It or List It, phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> they're, I, they're, I'm right there with you now. I'm right there oh, with I you, know. man. So Dude, I I will. I this is like a guilty like pleasure of mine is I will just sit and binge watch all HGTV shows ever basically. But but, you, but here's but here's the thing as somebody like me who's a cord cutter, I can't do that anymore because I don't have yeah. cable. I don't have coming in. And while there are a myriad of ways to get um, <laughs> other content, uh, other TV shows, whether it's Hulu or HBO Now or or other non you know official apps Legally. or things like that, right? Um, there's a whole substrata of shows that the internet just doesn't care about, you know? And like, I feel like, like the if, real housewives. Yeah, exactly. Like all the reality stuff and stuff like that. And the thing is a lot, some of those shows you can get either through the network apps. Like there is an HGTV watch app, which I use and I can watch, you know, I get my fix that way. Um, but to have it all in one app that basically gives you the kind of cable experience, that's, that's what the, the offering Sling TV gives without Chromecast to me though, is use, useless because I don't want to watch TV. I'm, if I had the Samsung, uh, Galaxy View. Galaxy View, it would be another story, but <laughs> so anyway, so Sling TV's got Chromecast support now, so we can all watch Yay. bad TV. So, all right, uh, getting close to the finish line here, folks. I know. <laughs> Let's thank one more sponsor before we head into the arena. We want to thank Braintree for helping bring this episode of All About Android to a reality. Uh, and listen, a lot of developers watch this show, a lot of people who are working in the IT industry. Maybe you're working on the next Uber or the next Airbnb or GitHub. Uh, then why not use the same simple payment solution that helped them become what they are today? Braintree makes mobile pay payments so fast, easy, and seamless. You can add it to your app with just a few lines of code, and you're instantly ready to accept Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, even Bitcoin. Shopping cart abandonment is a big problem, and if your customers are already using a familiar payment option, you have a better chance to convert them. In fact, we spoke with Ankar Ara, the general manager for Braintree Mobile, about why their one-touch platform is so important. If they can manage to get payment credentials the first time, the subsequent purchases are relatively friction-free, right? You can do one-touch buying and one-click buying, but sometimes the first time it's difficult to convert a, a user and get them to save their payment credentials. And so the one-touch buying experience effectively makes it such that if you have a PayPal or a Venmo account, you can provide a one-touch buying experience the very first time that, that you as a merchant interact with that PayPal or Venmo user, which is pretty powerful and just great for an overall buying experience. So Braintree's fast payouts and continuous support mean you'll always be ready whether you're earning your first dollar or your billionth. See fewer abandoned carts and more sales of Braintree's best-in-class mobile checkout experience. 
Braintree gives you a full stack payment solution, support for all payment types that your, that your customers might want, single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. That's right, fast payouts. To check it for yourself, visit braintreepayments.com slash Android. And again, we thank them for their support. And fast payouts are key. You need that when you're making an app. You want to get your money. So thank, thank you. Yeah. Bra thank you, Braintree. All right, let's head into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. All righty. So last week we had a, a collection of four app apps that were available to vote on. Uh, and the winner was, as soon as I can... Uh, I Brian scrolls down. It was, ja it was Jason. Jason. He won for Boomerang for some weird reason. With 37 I was in second place, though. I just want to say that. So 37% of the vote goes to Boomerang and Jason. 33% goes to Hexlock and Flow. 16% uh, goes to F-Stop Media Gallery, uh, our guests uh, from last week's uh, app. And I came in last with 14% for Monospace Writer Beta. And the developer of Monospace got in touch with me and thanked me for highlighting the app. And it's a really good app. And I think you guys uh, didn't give it that good of a shot. So there you go. But uh, I liked it. So that said, uh, that means I lost. So I've got to go first. And so I will go first. Dom, you'll be after me. And then we'll look at Flo's app. Um, it's funny because we were talking about uh, – we were talking about um, – uh, inbox by Google and the machine learning and kind of, you know, being able to have one-touch responses and things like that. Uh, the app that I'm showing this week is called TextSpand, uh, Text Expander, and it is an app that uh, on the desktop I use an application called Text Expander, which I cannot live without, which mm -hmm. basically allows you to um, program in uh, canned responses and then with a couple of keystrokes be able to output them. So, for example, I often say, you know, I often wrap up my emails the same way. Like, let me know if you have any questions, concern, thanks, you know, and then my SIG. So now I can just type semicolon SIG and it spits that into an email. Half I don't have to type the whole day, thing. Is that yeah, what you exactly. say? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so Text Expand basically does a, a similar thing but on your phone. So what you can do is when you install Text Expand, you do need to go into your settings. You need to set uh, the accessibility options to allow Text Expand to not only um, access other apps, but also to allow the hovering aspect. You know, that's that new permissions. Um, but when you have it, what you can do is you can add any sort of uh, phrase. So I can put in a shortcut. So I'll just say, um, you know, TMI. And then you can type out the whole phrase. And let's say for some reason I say too much information to... My friends all the time. Get to the point. Yeah, exactly. You talk too much. Okay, and so I can say, you know, and then you can add a description. Okay, and you can have it, you can set the settings to have it expand immediately or expand within words or not. I'm going to turn those off for now. I'm going to say expands immediately, yes. And you can save it. And you can see I've already saved a couple here where I have um, M-Y-N uh, gives my name and M-Y-E-M gives my email. And so now if I am in any sort of scenario, I'm going to go into keep here. And I'm going to start a note, all right? And so now what happens is when I start typing, if I type M-Y-N, right? You see this little orange dot that comes up? I can tap that, and it's going to make a suggestion, and I can say Ron Richards, and it automatically changes it. Like That's magic. Cool. That's cool. It's just really like, it's cool. just like uh, the app on OS Ten. Yep, pretty much. So um, if you find yourself, and now here it's already, I, as I typed it, it realized that there's a match. And I hit it, and I don't know why I didn't do it there, but boop. And there you go. And it, it gives my email address. I can go TMI, and it will automatically change it. You know how I had that setting where it says automatically replace? So um, if you are the kind of person who has a lot of canned responses that you need to give a lot, if you're, <laughs> if you're out in the field, if you're working with, um, you know, if you're working with, you know, similar phrases or things like that, that you want to get exact, if you're on the road, if you don't want to, you, I hate typing on my phone, the, the, the less typing I need, I, I need to do the better, um, then TechSpand is quickly going to become an app that you can't live without. Um, simple as that. So real simple, does the job uh, really well, great material design implementation, uh, and it's free in the Google Play Store. So TechSpand. Uh, and also, oh, I didn't even, uh, actually, Brian, you, that pointed out, if, uh, go back here, they have a whole bunch of dynamic values here. So if for some reason I wanted to add the day, month, year, or the time or anything like that, you can plug it in and you can have it be, you know, today's date, the exact time or whatever. It can be all these dynamic kind of variables. So, uh, yeah, so there you go. 
Uh, yeah. So TextBand, Text Expander, free in the Google Play Store. Check it out. That's my app. Uh, so Dom, awesome. what do you got for us? I went with Open Camera, and uh, this is an app by a gentleman with the name of Mark Harmon, and it's the, a camera the, app. The, the actor? Um, no. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say no. All right. Who is Mark it, Harmon? It, it, do you not know who Mark Harmon is? No. Did neither of you see Summer School? Oh, that guy. One of the one of the best. Okay, I know who this is. No, oh. I know who this is. God, I know this who is, this is. I'm so I just old. didn't know his name. Mark Harmon. He was on CSI or, or NCIS. He, NCIS. Or He's also in Freaky Friday, which is yes. where I know him from. Well, Summer School. Oh, was... you mean the main guy from NCIS? Yes. Yeah, that's oh, Mark Harmon. I know that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's also. Oh, he's also in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. He's also an Android app developer in his spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I don't. I don't think this is his. Obviously. Okay. Anyway, but, yeah, it, it's really cool though. Um, so, uh, I don't know if a lot of people have this this issue, but like, for for me, I like having manual controls on 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 the camera apps. And we were just talking about that earlier with the Google one, right? So, um, manual camera gives you that. Um, there's there's actually you have to enable. It's it, it's not all by default. Some of these options you enable within the settings and stuff, but it'll give you access to like white balance, ISO, uh, things of that nature, and and it'll also let you do it uh, during video recording, which for me is in, is important. I like having that kind of control, and um, you know, it, it gives you similar camera capabilities to what LG offers with the V10. If you were looking for something like that, you get those kind of uh, manual controls with open camera. And it works on any Android device. Obviously, the uh, features that are enabled uh, vary per device, depending on you know what's available with the with the software and uh, and the actual device itself. But it's a really solid app, and it allows you to lock focus, lock exposure. Um, you can uh, <clears throat> um, you can shoot. You can actually adjust the the video bit rate that you're shooting at, which I think is a really cool feature. Uh, not a lot of people are going to utilize that. But if, if you're looking for something that will allow you to do that, you can change the resolution, um, the bit rate, the frame rate. Um, you can set maximum durations of, of the video. You can have it automatically restart video recording after the max duration. Um, it, it, it's, it's really cool. It's really in-depth. Uh, one of the more in-depth camera apps out there on the Play Store. And it's free, too. So, I mean, you, you really can't go wrong. Try it. You can't go wrong with free, you know? Wow, it can, you can even set mono or stereo audio channels. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's really like I said, it's really in depth. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, and and like you do have to dig for a lot of it. And there are some experimental features that you can test as well, which are like in a beta, you know, beta mode. But it's I it's pretty awesome. I mean, I, I like it a lot, and the developer seems to kind of put everything you could possibly need and more inside of this app and just give it away to everybody it, it, it's it's 100 free no ads i think that's even part of their like thing is it's no ads you know it's just totally free well well that's the, that's the thing mark Harmon really believes in uh the, the, the photography <laughs> community <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's awesome though it's a really awesome <laughs> app <I> mean, <laughs> there you go mark Harmon, android developer extraordinaire so cool <laughs> Yeah, no, we, we've we've looked at a bunch of uh, camera apps recently. I think it's funny because you mentioned, you know, with the manual controls and that mm -hmm, sort of thing, and mm -hmm. we're seeing more and more apps. And I feel like every time we look at another uh, another app, it add, like another it adds another dimension to the idea of you know giving you control over your camera, um, and be it in UI or in functionality. And like this seems like way more video functionality than the other ones that I've seen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do you can have full on manual controls in video mode, which is huge for. Uh, for people that are looking for that, I mean, the V10 was is the only phone really. Uh, I mean, for the most part, that ships with as many manual controls as it does. I mean, there are some out there that have a little bit of manual action, but V10 is the only one that shipped with like just basically all you need. And open camera kind of uh, brings a lot of that to the table for any Android device. Yep. So pretty cool. Cool. And so to clarify, and we want to thank uh, Guy in the chat room for letting us know the actor is Mark Harmon. O N and the Android developer is Mark Harman and so it's not the guy it's not the teacher from summer school. What a man! What a man indeed, Mr. Shoop. 
So I'm 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 kind of upset now. I know. Well, you can still you can still I still strongly recommend you watch Summer School because it's a great movie. But uh, <laughs> all right, that said, Flo, uh, take us away on the the last uh, app in the arena. So I have a new favorite thing I like to do now, um, and part of this has a little bit to do with the fact that um, my so a long long time ago. All right, so my grandfather was a pilot. So as a kid, we used to, you know, watch the Blue Angels every year. And I grew up really obsessed with planes. And I've got a couple of, like, you know, friends on Twitter who are, like, aviation nerds. And I kept hearing about Flight Radar 24. And I was like, ah, man, I should just buy it and do it. So my new favorite little pastime is sitting out in the backyard and identifying which of the planes are flying overhead with this app, which which is also kind of creepy in a way when you think about it because they have all this information on you or rather they have all this information that's open. Um, let me see this. Okay. Adjusting the brightness. Sorry about that. So it's essentially, uh, an app that lets you see like what's flying overhead. Um, I bought the full pro version for three ninety nine. There are a couple of in-app purchases that you can um, purchase as well. It goes all the way up to four ninety nine. The way it works is you can basically see what's flying in your vicinity. Um, check out like uh, what kind of plane it is. Um, this one, this flight is from Hong Kong to SFO, so it's going to land pretty soon. It is a Boeing triple uh, seven. I'm trying to say this with the slang terminology that you would normally say airplane names, but I'm not very good at that. Um, and if you want, you can even do like a cool 3D mode and see what the pilots are seeing. So right now they're flying over Spassipol, which is very green, according to this imagery. Um, <laughs> at an altitude of 23,000 feet. Um, it's really like a super easy to use app. You can go like anywhere in the world if you want. So for instance, I'm gonna go, I don't know why this is on caps lock, but uh, I'm gonna go to London Heathrow and see what's going on over there. Uh, I forgot that Europe doesn't share most of its flight information, so it's not gonna work for this demo. Because Europe actually has privacy laws. Um, <laughs> just, oh, the EU. Oh, the EU. Uh, no, I actually discovered that the other day, and I realized that um, the reason I, I was trying to see the planes that were coming out of Romania, and I realized that, like, I can't do that because they don't really allow that. But um, overall, if you're really if you're really into airplanes and you like doing nerdy stuff like sitting outside in the backyard and listening to planes overhead and then identifying what they are, it's it's kind of fun. It's also fun to use with smaller planes, which unfortunately... I mean, I wonder if I can find like a little guy. Um, Oh, here we go. Here's like a small guy. It's a little Cessna. You can see him where he's going. See his little trajectory. He's flying into the canyon. Anyway, yeah, Flight Radar 24 Pro 399. All right. It's fun. It's fun. (laughs) So hypothetically... You can vote on these uh, <laughs> in the arena if I, I might have screwed it up. But if you go to the All About Android community on Google+, Plus, um, or if you go uh, into the All About, All About Android community page, or you go to the URL AAA poll slash 238, that might be broken right now, but it should be fixed eventually. Um, and Brian, I'll it worked for me. Is it working? All right, cool. Yeah, it All redirected right. me to the. Uh, All right, maybe it, maybe page. it's been updated already. So there you go. So a poll slash two thirty eight. You can vote for TextSpan, Text Expander, Open Camera, or Flight Trader Twenty Four Pro. Um, all great apps. Your vote can can count. Uh, I originally did the poll under my personal account, and then I quickly scrambled and did it under the All About Android account. That's why I was a little kind of shaken up there. So uh, That's why you weren't offering comments, yes, commentary exactly. on, yeah, my, exactly. on my I app. Was I was like leaving a couple of breaks in there for you, and then I was like, oh, it's not happening. So Frantically trying to not See, screw up. See, and I, I didn't know if those breaks were for him or for me, so I didn't want to jump in and like <laughs> you know take over I his see. This is, this is just... It's how we go. This is how we this roll. This is how we roll. We're yeah. all just... Listen, polite. listen, there's a linchpin to this show, and he's about 6'4". And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, yeah, so go to AAAPoll.com slash 238. You can vote in the poll. 
Uh, you can vote for the arena and pick your favorite app. Uh, all great apps, and we thank everybody for putting them in. Uh, that's it. We made it. We're, we're somewhat on time, which is great. Dom, thank you so much for joining us. How's your butt feeling, by the way? Is it sore? Because Me? Yes. Are you still talking about the raw editing? or No. The, you <laughs> yeah. know, when you're sitting for yeah. two hours. Like, I'm curious. I'm, I <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a butt. No, I, 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 I sit all the time. I mean, I, I you know. Really? I, Don't I, you know sitting kills you? <laughs> Well, I mean, I move too. You know, I, I do both. I, I have an even chair, so <laughs> my, my butt isn't always in Just a chair. Just making sure you're okay, yeah. you're comfortable over there. So, so yeah. Dom, where can people find you online? What uh, This is your opportunity to kind of, you know, pimp what you're working on, let everyone know uh, what, what, you're, what you're up to. Um, so um, you can find uh, most of my, like, my main work at youtube.com slash Dom. And uh, that's uh, where I upload videos on all kinds of, phones and consumer electronics and all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, and you can find accompanying written reviews for those videos on 9to5Google, uh, which is where I'll, I post some of that stuff as well. And twitter.com slash Mac Mixing. And that's pretty much it. Cool. That's where you find me. Excellent. Well, well, yeah, like we said earlier in the show, it's great to have uh, some representation from the 9to5Google. So uh, we appreciate it. Definitely. Flow. Yeah. What do you got going you on? Can, I, I still have a lot of reviews that I'm working on. So just check up on me at greenbot.com. Make sure I'm still alive. You can also find my stuff on pcworld.com. And you can find me at oh, that Flow, where I am tweeting about phones. Phones and, and public transportation. That's all that's going through my mind these yeah, days. All I see ever on your, when I see a tweet from you in my thing, it's like, blah, 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 Bart, blah, blah, blah. Like that's that's all that's all you ever tweet about. I swear. I'm a huge <laughs> Bart nerd. Like so, I'm like really into Bart infrastructure, nerd. which is why I really like planes and trains and like metro car. I'm just really into like that stuff. So no, but it's like always like it's always like something that I would never experience. And you're like, you ever have those times where you're just you feel sick on the Bart and you really just you know you're playing with your your galaxy thing or whatever. I'm like, what? What? Why are you, these Bart things always come up like uh, on on your feet? I always see them. Not that they're bad. I'm just, <laughs> I spend a lot of time in public transportation. I don't. And it's my life. The great thing is that if you're in if you're in you know New York, it could be the subway. If you're in Chicago, I complain it's the about L, I complain about a, the MTA when I come so, to NYC. Yeah, Don't so worry, yeah. everybody gets complained about depending on where I am at the okay. time. All of that, all well, about as, as much as you talk about Bart, you should be being paid to talk about Bart. <laughs> you know, I have tweeted at them about that, and but have unfortunately, they ever, have they ever retweeted you or or like I made the Bart roundup once. Like, yeah, they I, published, uh, like, they they actually reached out to my birthday and said happy birthday to me last. Nice. year because I was so excited. They were doing the surveys <laughs> on my birthday. And so for my birthday, I went and I took a BART survey to get a BART pen. And I had a sticker <laughs> that was what, like, what? I'm you, a, have I'm, like, you have a genuine grin on your face. Like, you are the love, happiest person. I love BART. It really makes Is it really sense. that good? No, no, no it's, it's awful. Not, no, it's, it's just, it's, it's, why do you love it then? Because it's my life. I have been. I have so many memories on that train, on those trains. What? Why don't you tell us the memories of uh, where people can find you online? <laughs> I already did that. Anyway, this isn't all about Bart. This is all about right. Android. That, need, that needs to be another Twitch show, by the way. Bri so. Brian, please help us. I, I don't know. I think uh, there's no brakes on the uh, off the rails train. Yeah, no, pretty much. So, but uh, I, at this point, though, I'm feeling like I should probably stand up. I've been sitting for too long. Oh, yeah, someone, that's good. someone's showing off his shirt. I oh. think. Oh. oh no, not really. Just I don't know. I just something's not right sitting that long. Uh, but you can follow me at cranky underscore hippo. I also do a how to show with Padre every Thursday. So uh, check that out. But what? How about that Bart though, guys? <laughs> It doesn't come to Petaluma, which, I know. Is, which is a bummer, yeah. and that's because, but we won't get into that. I only ever take the ferry. I feel left out. Not hey, I can, I can tell you stories about the Muni in San Francisco, but I won't. Yeah. So. Actually, my sister sent me a photo of me in 1989 in San Francisco standing in front of a Muni bus. And it's it, and it's like the old Muni bus, and it's like it's like oh, a nice like the little, one that was in Mrs. Yeah. Doubtfire. Kind of, yeah, yeah, like the old white mm -hmm, and the orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, it's kind of funny. So I don't know, but nobody will ever see that because I don't post pictures of me from years ago. <laughs> no TBT. Anyway, so uh, finally, if you want, <laughs> as I try to get us, I'm trying to get us to come home. Uh, you can go find my stuff at about.me/slash/ronxo. Uh, 
and find all, all that fun stuff. Go listen to my new podcast, Goodfellas Minute, at goodfellasminute.com. Uh, fun times, ifanboy.com, getdrop.com, all my great stuff that I work on. That's it for the show. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks for our studio audience. We appreciate it. Uh, so you can participate in the show. Uh, if you want to be heard, you can send us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can send us an email or a video mail. We love those. You can email those to AAA at twit.tv. That's AAA at twit.tv. Uh, we're on Twitter at Android Show. You can uh, check us out on Reddit at twitaa.reddit.com. You can find the full show notes and past episodes at twit.tv slash AAA. And, of course, we're on YouTube and iTunes, so you can get the past episodes there. And you catch us live every Tuesday starting about 5 p.m. Pacific time at twit.tv slash live. That's it. Jason, we miss you. Have a great week. Have a blessed day.